In today's tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make a ripple with a granny. Yes, you can make these really simply and I'm really surprised how fast they go. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a granny ripple just like so. This is part of a free pattern that I'll provide a link in the more information of this video for you and I have never done this before until last night. So if you look at the videotape editing of when this went out this is how long I've waited to learn the stitch. I really thought it was going to be a lot harder to make this than it really is and actually I'm kind of embarrassed now that I waited so long to figure out how to do it. So today I'm going to arm you with some information in order for you to be able to do it. So you can either follow the written instructions or I have this really crude diagram that I did for myself in order for me to figure out how many stitches to make because I figured out how to change the sizes based on the information that's in the pattern. So here's my little diagram that I made for myself so I could figure out how many stitches I can do in order to change it. So you're looking at the particular afghan in the pattern and you can see that there is the rippling effect all throughout it. So I thought to myself what if I don't want the size that's in the pattern? Well I figured it out that it's in sets of 18. So if you chain in sets of 18, so you go 18, 18, 18 and then you can just add one at the end. So it says multiple of 18 plus one. So that means that you're gonna go in 18, 18, 18, 18 as long as you wanna go and then at the very end of your chain you're just gonna add one and then you can maintain the balance of the entire project by making it sure it's at 18. So without further ado you can use any size crochet hook, any type of yarn that you want to do. You can change the colors as often as you want to. Um, it is an amazing little idea and you can have a lot of fun at the same time and again just like granny squares this goes really to, uh, relatively quickly. So let's begin. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot and I'm going to be using a size, what is this today? A five and a half millimeter size eye. I'm using Bernat Super Value yarn to demonstrate this today. So remember that the slip knot never counts as one and as I promised it's in sets of 18. So you don't have to get the calculator and say 18 times so and so. Just use the chain to figure out how long you wanna make it. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen, and eighteen. So there is my first set. So I'm gonna be able to get one chevron or one ripple out of this so far. What you have to keep in mind is that the length that you see here is not the length that it's gonna end up appearing or the width. What's gonna happen is because it is going up and down in a ripple you should look at it from this perspective. So basically how long you see it here is actually much shorter once it begins to do the ripple. So I'm going to do this just like the diagram. So I'm gonna add another two sets of 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Is it long enough? Yes or no? And for you, you can stop whenever you want. I'm gonna do one more set. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. So as I promised already it's in sets of 18 plus 1. So once you have your 18 in there and you have your chain long enough just add one more so that the project stays in balance. And this is what we have so far. So let's begin. We're going to start off by starting off the first group of three double crochets together. So what you're going to do is just count fifth back from the hook. So you got one, two, three, four, and five. Once you get your fifth just turn it over. It looks better and then just double crochet three times in there. Okay. So just double crochet into the same chain three times. So it's just like a normal granny where you put in a three somewhere. This is where it is. So coming back to the chain I want you to skip over two and then and then double crochet three times into the third chain over. So this is actually appearing as if it's going up a hill 
Um, you can't really see it at this point but this is what's gonna happen. So I visualize it like it's going up a hill. We're gonna skip two more stitches and now we're gonna do the top peak of each of this chevron for this section and you're just going to double crochet three times into the to the third one over. Okay, once you get that one in there, this is the top peak. So we have to pretend it's like a corner. So we have to chain three, one, two, three, and then three more back into that same chain. And that creates the peak of the chevron or the ripple or zigzag, or whatever you wanna call it. So now we're gonna come down the other side of the chevron. So you can kind of really see it there. It's coming up, it gets to the peak and now it's gonna head back down. So we're gonna skip over two, go to the third for three double crochet. Just like that. And then skip over another two, go to the third for three more double crochet. So what, what's gonna happen on this particular pattern is that in between the tops and the lower peaks there's only ever one stand alone by itself. Okay, and this is gonna make sense in just a moment. Okay, so you, this is the bottom here, this is the middle, and this is the top. So there's ever only one in the middle. So this is the bottom of the peak, and this is only just for the chain area. We have to skip five. So one, two, three, four, five, and go to the six, and just three double crochets there. This is the bottom of the chevron and it's gonna create a point on the bottom side. Okay, so you got that going up. Now you, this is now starting to go up the other way. So now let's continue to go up the hill. So we're gonna skip over two, go to the third for three double crochet again. So this is the middle of going up the hill. If you can just visualize it in three sections, I just found it was easier for myself. We're gonna skip over two and we're gonna do the top peak. So the top peak is three double crochet to start into the same, into the same chain. And again, this gets easier once you get beyond this chain. And then you're just gonna uh, chain three, and, okay? And then back into the same space for three more double crochet and you've just created another top. Uh, top, uh, top peak <laughs> of your chevron, your ripple, or your zigzag, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so it's looking like this. So we're gonna come back down the hill. So we're gonna skip over two more on the chain, one and two, go to the third for three double crochet. So this is the middle. Now I'm being very loose with my stitches for demonstration purposes. My original is not this loose in the bottom. Okay, and now we're going to skip over two more and we're going to do the bottom peak again. So it's three double crochet to start with. Then you skip over five and go to the sixth. So one, two, three, four, five and go to the sixth. And three double crochets into that one. So we're doing the other side of the bottom peak. So we're gonna start going up the hill Okay, skip over two, three double crochets into the next. So you're going up the hill. This is the middle one of going up the hill. Okay, skip over two and this one is in the third and this is the top peak again. So what's in the peak? That's right, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. One two and three. So you're doing this all the way across your particular chains that you have in order to make it work for your entire project. And you'll notice in, it's in the next uh, row that we're gonna do is really it's gonna start bending the project and making it more obvious. So we're gonna come down the other side. So we're skipping over two and three double crochet into the third. Okay, skipping over two, going into the third. And that's three double crochets. So that's the bottom of the peak, but you're not gonna go up anymore because you're on the end of the line. 
and then simply all you just have to do in the last stitch is just double crochet. And I'm gonna pull this up to show you in just a moment. So that's exactly what you have at this point. You can see that the bottom edges are really not defined very clearly yet but there will be within the next one and you can kinda see that we have three peaks going on just like you would see in the sample that I've drawn up for you. So let's turn our work and begin the next row. To begin the next row in all remaining rows from this point on it's really easy. We're always gonna start off with chaining of three. One, two, three. You're now gonna work in between the gaps of the three double crochets together. So just here's the first gap there. So you're not worrying about anything beyond here. You're going immediately to in between there and you're going to put in three double crochets. And you're going to notice that first um, chaining a three that we started with appears to be on an angle but in actual fact it's not on an angle. Your work you have to visualize it going on an angle as it's going up the hill. Okay so now it's straight up. Okay so once you get your first one in you're gonna go to the next set and you're gonna put three in between the three double crochets. And now you're at the top of the peak here. So what do you think it's gonna be? That's right it's three double crochet and then how many chains is it? That's right it's three. So we got one, two and three and because it's the top of the peak what are we gonna do next? That's right we're gonna put three double crochets in. So we're gonna pretend it's like a corner of an afghan. So now we're gonna come down the hill so we're gonna work look for the next gap space and put in three double crochet. So this is the middle one of the three and you're gonna come and put the next one into the between the next middle and this is the bottom one of the three. It's not always obvious right in the very beginning right now. Okay so here's what you have to do is that you have to look for what is going on on both sides. So you're going to be putting in one over here and over here. So you have to come on both sides of this here. So you're gonna come in over here. So now you have to look where is the next one gonna be. I have to tell you you're on the bottom here. You're going to skip over two of these. Okay two of the sets and go into in between the third and the fourth. Okay so we're at, we're at the base in the bottom. Okay there's your chain five right down here. So where are we gonna go next? We're gonna skip over these two sections here. So we're gonna go between here and the end. Okay so you're gonna skip over two and then just start over and put in three double crochets and I'll show you why that makes sense in just a moment. Okay so basically what's happened here is that you have to maintain it. This is the point coming down and so if you went in between here then basically you're going to lose that point sinking down. So let's work up that up the hill. So you're just coming into the next gapping space for three double crochet. And now you're on the top peak. And remember what it is? That's right, it's three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. It's just like a regular corner of a granny square. So one, two, and three, and then three double crochet back in. So we're gonna come down the hill again and so we're just gonna come to the next space for three double crochet. This is the middle one of the three. Okay we're gonna do another one. So we're gonna come into the next space. So this is the bottom one of the three. And so this is where we need to look on what we need to skip in order to go back up the other side. So we're gonna skip over the next two sections right here and go right here. So that those two middle ones stay down in the bottom. And there's three double crochet. So we just immediately just jump over and three double crochet in there. And you can clearly see that those two at the base, see it's doing the right turn. And now let's come back up. So we're gonna, this is the middle one. So three double crochet. Okay and then top peak. So the top peak is three double crochet, chain three and three double crochet. Ok 
Okay, we're gonna go down the hill, but we're gonna be running out of stitches, so we gotta watch what we're doing here. We're gonna come into the next gap space as we go down the hill, so this is the middle one of the three. And then we're gonna come into the next space, which is the base of the three. It's the bottom one of the three. And what do we need to do? Well, just like we started off with chain three by itself, we need to put in a, a double crochet right into the chaining turn, the turning chain over here. Okay, so basically this is what it looks like. So I'm going to start one more row. I'm not gonna do the entire row, but I'm just gonna get you started. And you can see that the chevron uh, look is actually starting to take effect and it's just really easy. So let me turn and get you started one more time. To start again, all I need you to do is just chain three. So one, two, and three. Now you're going to come and you're gonna just ignore this whole section right here and just come to the first one and put in three double crochet. And again, if you think that chain is not looking like it's proper, remember that this thing is on an angle so it should be working up in a vertical line like it is. You're gonna come into the next space for three double crochet. And what is the next space after that? It's obviously the corner. So the corners are three double crochet, chain three, one, two, and three, and then three double crochet again. Okay, so now we're gonna come down the hill. So that we're gonna come into the next space available to you. This is the middle one of the three. Okay, because remember the top one is already one, two, and then we're gonna do the next one. This is the base of the three, the bottom of the three. So where do we go from here? Once we get this done, just like we did before, we need to skip over the two middle ones here and just go right here as we go back up the hill. If you're ever unsure and you put it in the wrong spot, just double check yourself just by opening it up after you do it and just determine does that make sense? And you can see it does make sense. You got the base here, these two are working together by themselves. In the middle, these two are by themselves and now these two are by themselves. Okay, we're just gonna work up. And this is how easy this pattern is. I cannot believe how fast it was. I've been ignoring this pattern for years, this type of crochet. I figured it was a lot more harder than it is but turns out I shouldn't have been. So we're at the top peak, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. And just like so. So when you come back, uh, you can always do borders around these things. Uh, as per the pattern, it's actually asking you to do single crochet around the base chain here and uh, it provides a really neat thing and you can find more information about that in the pattern itself. But this is how you would do a standard granny ripple and you can see that it turns out really nicely at the same time. Till next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd. See you.